Hi, I'm Kenny Joya. Welcome to another one of my tutorials. In this video, I'm going to show you how to edit or customize the Reaper 5 default theme. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the Reaper form. I'm going to go to the subform right here called Reaper Color Themes and Icon Sets. And there's a sticky up top here called Common Tweaks to a Reaper Theme. If we choose this, Y tie outlines how to tweak a Reaper theme. But if we go down here a little bit, we could choose this link, which is going to take us to his website, which will give us a walkthrough of editing the theme. And there's a little video right here showing us how to get started. Now, when you have the time, you should go through the whole thing because we're not going to cover everything in this video. But let's start from the beginning. We have Reaper already started over here. Let's hit continue. Then we go to the options menu and go to show Reaper resource path. Let's do that in Reaper. Right up here and go down to show the path for our resources. It goes to our directory where all the Reaper files are being stored. Let's go back to our walkthrough. Let's hit continue. And we're going to open the folder called Color Themes. So let's do it over here. Open it up. Then we're going to locate the Reaper Theme zip file, which is this file right here, Reaper 5.0. Then we're going to change the name of it to .zip instead of zip. So right here, I'll name it .zip. And that's going to change it to a zip compressed file. Now I'm using a Mac, so if you're using Windows, you might want to check this out separately. But it's pretty similar. So I'll choose the Mac one, and now we're going to extract the contents. So I'll just double click this one, creates another folder here, as it mentions. OS 10 may create a new folder. Let's get rid of that. Let's open this up. Take these two things and put it in here. Then we can delete this folder. Then we're going to open up this folder. And we're going to look for the file. Right down here. RT config.txt. I'll just type R. And it shows up right here. This is the text file we're going to use to edit the theme. So let's open this up. And this is that text file. So like I said earlier, we can go through some of the options to change the TCP layout by changing the order of some of our elements. Right over here is the track control panel. So we can edit all these elements by adjusting this text file. So let's scroll down to this area here, track control panels. And notice it's labeled user, that's us. We can mess with this. And there's different setups for each layout. This is our default. This is the standard one. And we can see them as they correspond. If we go to the options menu, to our layouts right here. On the track panel, we have a default, standard, and a bunch of other ones. I'm using this one right now large and value readouts. That's the one I choose for most of my tutorials because the buttons are very big, so it's easy to see. So that's the layout we're going to edit. So let's scroll down in the text file and find that layout. Here are the names right here, and each one of them can be edited completely separately. But to make it easier, we're just going to edit this one right here, large and value readouts. Now, instead of editing this one, let's actually duplicate it. So we're going to start right from here, layout, and scroll all the way down to end layout. So we highlight all this text. Let's copy it. Let's paste it right afterwards. 
And now we duplicated it. So let's change the name of one of them. Instead of calling it large and value readouts, let's change this to custom. I'll do it with a K and all caps. This way we can see the difference. So now let's save this file. And I'll go back to Reaper. Go to our layouts. And we don't actually see it. That's because in order to recognize it, we have to refresh our theme. So we're going to do this with a key command. On the PC, it's Alt and Control. On the Mac, it's Option and Command. Hold on those modifiers and go Page Up to switch a theme. It doesn't matter which one it goes to. Then hit Page Down and it goes back to that theme. But it refreshes it. So we can do that key command very quickly each time we make a change. Just go Page Up, Page Down, and it's refreshed. So now go to Options, go to our Layouts, go to Track Panel, and right down here is our change. Custom with a K, Large and Value Readouts. So if we choose this instead, it looks exactly the same, but we can now edit it without losing the other layouts. So let's play around with it a bit. Right here we can change the order of those controls. So over here, we have the Record button, and then our Track Label. Or the track name. And we can see that right here record arm and then label. Let's switch the order of those two elements. We'll change this to two and this one to one. Let's save it. Go back to Reaper, switch themes, page up and page down. And now it's switched those elements. We have a label right here and the record button over here. So we can change the order of our elements that easily. Now it's important to notice when we change the size of the track control panel, it moves them around, but it keeps the order. So the smaller we make it, it moves to the second row or the third row, or it stretches it out like this. But we can still change the order. For instance, our pan, we could put after the mute and the solo. Let's go over here. Here's our pan. Here's our mutant solo. And this time, instead of swapping the numbers, let's move the lines around. So let's just cut this right here, put it after it, and let's renumber them, starting from one, two, and all the way up. And the rest are the same. Save it, back over here, page up, page down, and it changed the order of our mutant solo and our pan. The pan is now over here. Let's bring this out a bit so we can see the effects. In fact, let's say we don't want to see the effects. We can remove that element altogether. Let's give this value a zero. And let's do the same with the effect bypass. Right here, this is the effect, this is the effect bypass. They're actually two different elements. So we'll give them both a zero. And if we save this and go back, page up, page down, the effects elements are gone. But it's holding the space of where it was. You can kind of see, if we move this around, see the space is still being saved. If you don't want that to happen, just move the other numbers in front of them. So this stops at seven, we'll make this eight, and nine, and so on. And now that space takes place at the end. So we're not gonna even notice it. Let's move these over. Refresh the theme. And there's no longer a space. But we still don't see the effect and the effect bypass button. We removed them. But we can pull this out without seeing that blank space. And in this way, we could remove a whole bunch of things that we don't need. Let's say we don't want the mutant solo. Let's do zero and zero and renumber these. And the mutant solo buttons are gone. Now, besides removing things and changing the order, we could also change the width of things. So let's say we wanted to change the width of this right here. Our input, 
we can change that over here. The record input, if you look right here, the width of this is set to 70. We could change that width to make it wider or skinnier. Let's make it 140, which is double. Save it, refresh this. And now the record input right here is twice as big. Let's move our fader to the end. Order volume. Let's just move it down over here. Renumber these. Refresh this. And now our fader is at the end. But let's make the fader much bigger. Order volume is set to zero, the width. Let's change it to 250. Save it, refresh it, and now it's so big, it's on the third row. But now we see a much bigger fader. It's more obvious what the fader is actually doing. Now to give you an idea of what's possible when editing these track layouts, let me show you one that I created very recently. Right over here, you notice on the bottom here, I have that big fader, but I also put all the most important elements that I use to the right side over here. My effects, my envelopes, so mute and pan, with my volume down here. So I don't have to move as much to get to the things I use the most, as I'm using the stuff on the left a bit less. So I created this one just for me and how I prefer to work. So you can get an idea of how you could create your own custom layouts. Now there's so much more we can customize besides the track control panel. We could do the same thing for the master track control panel, our envelope control panels, the mixer and all its layouts, like the session mixer, strip full controls, live recording, the master mixer, and even the transport. Now, one of the nice things about this is you don't have to worry about making a mistake. This can seem a bit complicated, but if you ever do make a mistake, we can always go back to the original Reaper 5 theme. Let me show you. Let's go back to our directory. Just delete these two. Rename this without the decimal point. and it goes back to the default behavior. So now we go back to Reaper, reset the theme, and it's back to where we started. And if we go to look at our layouts, we'll see the custom layout is no longer there. So we can undo it at any point. But it's very useful and a much faster way to work when you can customize where these elements are. So that's pretty much it. That's editing the default 5 theme in Reaper. I hope you learned something, hope you can use it, and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Mm -hmm.